Hi, I'm John. I'm an engineer and also a specialist in fitness equipment. I've got here a treadmill. This is a Sprint 9 treadmill. Uh, the treadmill that you might have will be very similar to this. There's always slight differences, but essentially the, the base of the machine, this is the running platform, the belt and the motor area, usually comes pre-assembled. And you need to put on things like these legs. This is one I've, I've already put on. The console will usually come as a separate piece and you need to put that on. And obviously there's an upright leg to go here, which is this one. I've left this off because I want to show you some tips um, which will make building it a little easier and help you overcome some problems based on my experience of building oh, hundreds of thousands of these. Um, so uh, the most important thing is really to do with the wiring. Uh, on this particular leg, there's a wire that runs right up the length of the leg and you can see it's, it's barely long enough to reach out both ends, that's, that's the wire tight. So quite often you'll have a problem where you'll go to assemble this and then you'll lose one or the other end sort of halfway up the leg, you'll accidentally pull it out. So here's a top tip, top tip number one, get a little bit of insulating tape or sellotape or anything you happen to have around really that's, uh, that will do the job and securely fasten it around one end of the connector and then pull off some slack. And then at the other end, get hold of the connector and just pull it out a little bit more and pull the tape in. And then we'll just make off the end here. Just like that. So straight away, what we've, what we've now got at this end, lots of free harness uh, and plenty for us to work with. So you can do the same at both ends. Let me just show you that again. So wrap the tape around the connector at one end. You want it good enough so the tape won't pull off the connector and then just pull off, pull off a length and then fasten it to the top like that. Just helps you get the end, saves you losing it. So we're gonna figure out which way this is going to go. Well, with this one, we've got the holes for down here, so it looks to me as though this is going to go that way. And we've also got to make a connection here at the end of the uh, end of the leg. So let's pull our connector end back through this way. There it is. And I can pull some slack. There we go, plenty of slack there. And let's get rid of that. Okay, so this is an important connector. You want to be able to get this assembled correctly because by the time you've assembled this, the last thing you want to do is then have to take all this apart to check your connector if for some reason the machine doesn't work. So pay particular attention that the pins are all straight and that they line up in the connector. Also make sure you've got the connectors orientated around the right way. They've usually got a latch on one side and a little plastic tang on the other, which is like a, a catch. And the latch goes over the catch and clicks as it goes on. And to release it, you just push on the back of the latch and then pull the connectors apart. So it's quite easy to double check that you've not bent any pins or inadvertently got something out of a line. And you should find the connector goes together nicely. Give it a push, click, job done, nice and tight. So that's the first bit done. Now we've got to pull the slack through because we don't want a great big bundle of cable here. We need to lose some of the slack back up this leg. And also, I'm going to pull it through this side as well. And then we can offer this leg up into the slot. So you need to follow the manufacturer's instructions for this because there's slight differences on different treadmills. But essentially, the principle is the same. Usually, you've got a wire coming through the leg. And it's very important to make sure that it's free and it doesn't get caught between these metal faces. Uh, so let's pop that in there. And now I can just pull on this end again. And now I can pull my connector back through. There, there it is. And I'll just double check that's nice and free. So as I pull on one end, I can feel on the other. That's all nice and free. That's not caught. I'll just reattach that. Just while I do these bolts up here. So you always start the bolts finger tight if you can because it avoids stripping them and cross-threading them. That's 
it's all fine. Last two. There they are, that's in. So they've all started. This is an Allen key, this comes with the machine. And I can just tighten them up now. I'll do them as tight as I can. If you get these too loose, then the leg will wobble, particularly when you're running on it. And it can lead to squeaks and rattles, clonking noises. So it's always worth making sure these are nice and tight. And if necessary, just check the machine first before you put the plastic covers on here, just in case you need to revisit this area and just, just give them a tighten up. But that's fine for now. So I've got a good connection. My harness is not trapped. Nice and tight. Pull the end back through. And now we're ready to attach the console. For this part, uh, I'm going to ask Simon to come along and just give me a hand. Simon, if you wouldn't mind lifting the console for me, please, and just offering it up to the machine. Uh, and you can see why this is a two-person job. That's it. Just hold it there a moment. Let's get rid of this tape that we don't need anymore. Let's pull that off. There we are. Okay, so a little more forward. That's it, if you can hold that there. So first thing I want to do is just make this connection. So again, I've got to make sure that the connector's made the right way. My pins are nice and straight, just the same as the one at the bottom there. Push, click, nice and tight. I just double check that. No bent pins. Because again, I don't really want to be taking the whole treadmill apart again to double check that if for some reason I have a problem. So I can feed the excess down through there and just guide it onto that top there. Okay, so, so now I'm just checking with my finger that my wires are still free, which they are. That's the one for my remote controls that go on here. So first job is to put the, one of the fixings on. And if you can get one in to start with, the machine's now taking the weight of the console, which is very good. Let me just do that finger tight. I've now got to put my second fixing in. Now this one's actually going to go through where the wires are running. The wires are running up the, up the arm here, so this is quite tricky to do. I've really got to make sure that that fixing doesn't snag on the wires. It's quite easy to do once you're aware of it, but if you're not aware of it, it's a sort of detail you can just overlook. And we can tighten those up now. Like that, so there's my connector nice and free. And then my remote control. So once again, we've got the connector. Make sure the connector's the right way. Pins aren't snagged. Just double check. Yeah, that's good. Latch to latch. Our harness isn't caught anywhere, which is good. And I'm just going to tuck the excess away down into the frame there because I'm going to screw through here and there onto the frame. So all these little wires, I want to make sure that they're not being caught, for example, over over that because that will snag the wire and short it to earth or break it. That's all looking good. So I'll get one of my screws, pop that in. And we just do that just loose for a moment and get the other one in as well. that lined up. I can tell it's not cross threaded because it's going in nice and easy. Everything's nice and flat so I'm happy with that. I know there's no wires squashed. I'm not going to over tighten those because it's plastic. I'm just worried if I do over tighten it it might just pull through and I don't want to do that so just tight enough. Just finger tighten a little bit more. There we are. That's, that's fine. Good to go.